public session and we are going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, next up is our consent agenda. Um, we've got warrants. Warrant numbers were sent around. Minutes are in the packet. The memo for the monthly budget transfers is also in the packet. So motion to approve consent agenda. Second. Okay. Any questions or comments on that? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. And that passes 6-0. Thank you very much. Next up is our recognitions. Do you want to start with the? I do. Mascot one? So, um, we've we've been having a conversation about the mascot for for quite a while, um, and most recently, you were all able to see, I think, the wonderful work by one of our students. Um, and so we decided to bring Julia Dinescu here this evening to present her with a certificate of recognition. Um, the work that you did already, I think, is is wonderful. And so that in itself, I think, is wonderful recognition for you that you're going to see your artwork and your design displayed in all of these different places. But um, we just know that all of the students who participated, I think they, they took a lot of time to consider the ideas. And I know you you met with a number of different people and you took feedback and and um, and I just feel like it was, I'm hoping that it was a positive experience for you. You seem to be very happy about the whole process and I, I know uh, Mr. Antonelli just talked about the fact that you were just smiling all of the time, um, which I think is fantastic. But we wanted to recognize you, so we have a certificate for you that is just a certificate of recognition um, for the fact that you were the winner of the mascot design contest. So this is Julie Vanessa. We'll do this. We'll do the official, like, do I hand you this. I do this. <laughs> do Somebody it's been a long time since you and I have talked to each yeah, other, right? Way yeah, back to our true. storyboard days. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if, if you had any, um, you know, uh, easy questions. We don't want you know, to, I, I just throw questions out there, but I mean, the fact that she went through this process and, and she went through this design process, if you had a question for her, whatever. Um, Julia would be probably happy to, as long as it's a nice, friendly question. <laughs> We're not going to ask her any difficult questions at this moment in time. I have one. So I really like the design. It re like right away when I saw it, I, it stood out to me. Thank you. Um, and I like the adjustments you made to it too, although I liked it before also. Um, what, like what made you come, like what was your inspiration? What made you come up with that particular design? Um, well, like when I originally decided to do it, I had some trouble coming up with ideas, so I literally just searched up ghost on Google and then I like I saw different like things that I liked and different pictures and I kind of like based off of what I liked I like kind of like pieced it together in mm -hmm. my own kind of way mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. oh. cool I was just gonna say um, I noticed too this week or was it last week that you updated the ghostwriter logo too oh yeah for people who don't know the high school oh, yeah, newspaper cool. uses the used the old silhouette um, and you updated that so I just thought that was such a nice signal that you, of the comprehensive holistic approach that it's taken right that it's in everywhere that it is let's update it and be cohesive so nice job on that too thank you I've actually um I've gotten like requests like from my choir director to make something like that and also uh, the lacrosse director or something like that to make something oh for that. So I'm working on both of those right now. At the That's awesome. I hope you're charging. Them. I was going to say, what's your rate, what's your rate for that? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be weird for you. I think, you know, in the coming months or in the coming years or coming back as an alum to just see it places. I would think, I would think yeah. it'd be really cool, but also a little bit weird to see your design. Mm -hmm. just yeah. Like, I thought it was super everywhere. interesting. Like I remember the first time I saw it was I was like in like a, presented in an area was on the Wi-Fi password thing <laughs> that's like posted around the school. Like I went into the PAC and I saw it right there and I I like realized that it was there. I was like, oh my God, like that's my ghost. <laughs> that's really great. That 
that is very cool. Now, clearly, you've, you've got a knack for this stuff. Is this uh, your hopes to do this, like for, pursue a career in graphic design or something? Actually, or? no. I just have it as, like, one of my hobbies. Like, I got an iPad for Christmas last year, and I kind of, like, I think that digital art is very interesting. Like, I thought it was very fun. Like, I've done art, like, my whole life, like, not digitally of course but like like then I started to like apply that onto my iPad I thought it was pretty cool but yeah I actually want to go to PA school in the future nice be a PA nice. so very good I'm curious like the what were the conversations you were having or were you having any conversations with like friends or you know classmates and stuff while you were doing the whole thing like after I found out during I the just, process like, or even after like I, I'm just curious um, I didn't really like start talking about it necessarily uh, too much until the polls actually started to roll in because I didn't like really expect to get that far honestly like like it was just something I did for fun like yeah like I thought it would be super cool to win obviously <laughs> but like um, like I don't know like once I found out that they were they chose like the last two mm -hmm. um, I like uh, then I started to like really get into it I was like vote goes B. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations, yeah. and thank congratulations. you for doing it, because yeah, no now problem. we have our new mascot. Thanks to like you. Like Chris is saying, like people will remember this. Yeah. You know, it's not just you that will go back to the high school and see it. Other of your classmates will be like, oh, that's the thing that Julie made for yeah. us. So, um, so you'll be remembered in your hometown in the same way. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I don't know. I don't. I think this is sort of a renewed um, effort, but uh, the like the football team for example on their social media has really embraced it right like it's all like they do hashtag ghost up and they talk about home games or in the haunted house mm -hmm. and so it's really kind of cool to see all of that energy focused around the new mascot mm -hmm. um, and the new design so I didn't know thank you thank you thanks for coming thank you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And again, you may leave or stay. <laughs> Either way, we're good. Right. Next up is our uh, some members of our new student advisory committee, which is in its first year at Westford Academy. We have three of our uh, five representatives here tonight, and I would like to invite them up to the table mm -hmm. just to do brief introductions. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, can, can we wheel them? Oh, I was going to say yeah, that's the first chair. made that wonderfully yeah. awkward. Yeah. We invite three of you. Yeah. There's two chairs. <laughs> we'll play a song when the music ends. This is the first Find yeah, a chair. This is the beginning of <laughs> this is a test. Go and so this is, uh, we've talked about this, so the committee knows, but for anybody who might be watching who doesn't, this is um, a committee that will meet and, uh, and will meet with, specifically meet with the school committee or representatives from the school committee to talk about any matters that may be on their mind, things coming up um, either that are pertinent to their experiences at Westford Academy or pertinent to the entire district, you know, since most of you have gone through um, multiple schools in this district. And so we will meet regularly. We, we've told them they can meet on their own without us as well. Um, and so we're working on what the schedule will be for, for those meetings. And then um, at their next meeting, they will choose a chairperson from among the five of them, and that will become our second representative to these meetings, uh, along with Megna, who's the school, uh, the student council representative for us. Okay, I prefaced it, I think, enough. Um, <laughs> would you guys mind introducing yourselves briefly? Um, hi, my name is Baran Kashik. I'm a senior, and one of the reasons why I got into this is I wanted to bring personal financial literacy to the curriculum at WA. Mm. Um, my name is Anya Krishnamurthy. I'm a freshman, and one of the reasons I joined this is because I wanted to try to like open up my horizons and to try to like learn to speak more and use my like knowledge in um, anti defamation league into like bringing this. Uh, my name is Madeline Poirier. I'm a sophomore, um, and the reason I'm interested in like student advisory committee and school committee is um, just I guess trying to to kind of build a bridge between the adults and the kids. I think it's important to have communication open um, because it's it's everybody who's involved in the decisions that are made here, so, yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Great. And our other two members are Misha Khan and Kirsten O'Connell, right? Yeah. 
and so yeah, I don't know if by chance either of them are on the Zoom. I don't oh, know thank they, you for. Either of them are online. I don't think so, but I will just, check. We, we kind of did throw out mm. that they could be here in person or on Zoom. It doesn't look like they okay. are right now. They might be watching on YouTube. Um, how does how does the um, the grades work out for for five? We do two seniors. Two seniors. Oh, okay. Thank yep. you. And that's that's actually in our po in our new policy that the policy subcommittee crafted for us in the spring. Well, welcome. We'll be seeing more of you. And just so the committee knows, we're, we're kind of working through how we're going to do this as far as meeting with them and who's going to be there. Gloria has sort of been the, the main point of contact. Um, we might have it such that Gloria is there every meeting, but then we rotate other people in. I mean, we could meet all together. That would be a posted meeting. And so we'll just have to weigh sort of the, the trade-offs of having a posted public meeting versus having a smaller subset of the committee being able to meet, um, meet with them. And we could, do, we could do some of both. All right, so we'll be seeing you soon. And again, you may stay and watch. <laughs> you have to go. Yeah. We understand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to Thank see you all three of you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited for this year. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, we move on to public comment. Um, if anyone on Zoom has anything for public comment, you can raise your hand on Zoom and we can bring you in for that for folks who are on uh, watching on YouTube oh, we're not live on YouTube tonight yeah I stand corrected um, if you're watching on cable TV on channels 34 99 or whatever they are <laughs> well they know we don't have to tell them oh, they, uh, if they're on there they already true. know because <laughs> they found it um, they're looking for another channel right now <laughs> <laughs> but they'll know that yeah. too that they don't want to be here. Um, but if you want to do public comment zoom is the way that remote attendees can uh, be brought in and do public comment otherwise come join us on usually on every other Monday night here at Millennium School <laughs> I don't see any hands up in public comment so I think we can move on to informational updates and we'll start with the superintendent update uh, before I actually give the update did you say did you already establish when you have a reg do you have a regular meeting date or time just even yourselves the students Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, we have our next meeting set up, and we're going to talk and about then that. that piece out. And figure that out. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, the first part of my update, um, Ms. Dubois shared with us again that the NAB Nasset and Abbott schools were awarded the early grades literacy grant for the third year in a row. So they've been doing, they've been working on this grant two previous years, and then um, this will be the third year. Uh, that's been really kickstarting our science of reading. Um, program as well too um, and so that was something that I just think it was nice that that they'll again be able to to uh, finish up with that grant um, in my visits uh, to day school and Chris Foley specifically I just wanted to uh, highlight it was it was fantastic seeing uh, when I went to day school I was I was watching the the fifth graders um, begin their first literature circles for the year so they had been working towards it, it they, you know different they were able to choose the text that they wanted to read out of a selection that that was given to them but it's it's so wonderful seeing them in these small groups talking about the stories talking about the characters um just the different activities that i think they do a part of uh with that is always fun and then um a very interesting thing uh mr sardell and i were were going around together and we we visited a small group that was working with one of the math interventionists. And the math interventionist um, did a magic trick, except she was very clear to say it's really not magic, it's, it's math. But she was able, we watched two students pick a number right in front of us. She had all these cards that had the different numbers on it, and she figured out what their, their number was. And like, we were all, all four of us were dumbfounded. So I'm excited to go back to find out how she actually did this, but she wouldn't actually tell us at that moment in time. So I, I have to go a couple doesn't. of times. What's that? Good magician, magician does not reveal this. Yeah, she like, did say it's not really magic because right, so she, she wanted it to be clear it. that it's mathematical. Magic. She wanted to be very clear, but I mean, it was, it was crazy. That's really it was crazy. Um, I enjoyed that. Uh, I also in, wanted to sh shout out for um, Miss Gorham, uh, our curriculum coordinator for three to five um, STEM. I was able to observe her co-teaching a class at um, Chrisafoli, which again, it was just fantastic to watch. 
she was she was going through a lesson with the students and empowering them to articulate their math thinking as to how they had solved this specific equation and the variety of strategies that the students were using again just blows my mind because immediately you know i my experience being high school and middle school i just go back to my math instruction when i was in school where there was only one way to do things and there we weren't encouraged to to develop different strategies and so it was just a, it was a really it was a really enjoyable thing to just watch the curriculum coordinators in action with the teachers co-teaching working with the students um and then also just trying to understand some fifth grade actually that was third grade that was third grade uh trying to understand some of the third grade logic was also uh enjoyable um so those are things that i just wanted to highlight with the school visits november 9th is when i i'm thinking about doing the zoom webinar for the strategic district improvement plan priority areas in the evening for all of the families i but i'm going to send that information out to the families once i i just want to confirm that there's not conflicting things i know that the zoom is available that evening but i want to look to see make sure i'm going to look at the calendar so i just want to let all you know that it's it's going to be coming up soon in sometime in the first two weeks of of november and i'm, I'm right now i'm looking at november 9th um and then the other aspect is just i've already been receiving some great feedback from the different school advisory councils as they've been talking about the the priority areas they started doing that in october they'll continue that in november and then we also talked about it at our dei team meeting recently we broke up into two groups we had the pre-k to five group come for one session and then the six through 12 group come for a different session and we also got a lot of great feedback um, there as well too and we'll be doing similar things like that in november so then i'm, I'm looking forward to kind of bringing all that together to share with you in december that's great um did you have anything additional that you wanted to uh, i just want to mention that we heard some really positive feedback about um allowing students to observe yom kippur and diwali and having the days yeah. off so um between dr chu and the committee i know that there's a lot of appreciation out there um and so just keeping that in mind as we develop next year's calendar and then aside from that we are um planning november 8th professional development we're preparing for report cards as we transition to power school so that's a little bit different there's some additional training and of course what we started already was um, preliminary budget conversations and we're looking at the right now Magali and I are looking at all the softwares and the subscriptions that need renewal and trying to pull together our budget to present to um, Dr. Chu and then then we'll be off <laughs> we will move on to school committee updates and I want to do one I want to piggyback you were talking about hmm. the math curriculum and so we've started our school walkthroughs as a right. committee we've done I just had it pulled up here I have, it, I have it open twice that's how often I reference this spreadsheet <laughs> um, and I just closed one we have done three so far since our last meeting I believe yeah since our last meeting and I just want to talk just for a second we were at day school today and we had the same conversation a little bit about math and the math strategies and I've said it before probably in this setting but like as somebody who always loved math like the way it's taught now has always resonated with me as yeah this is how I you know how I do it not that there's one way to do it but this is sort of I like the flexibility that we're teaching our students and I know and I just want to say this for parents sake because I remember when I first ran for school committee it wasn't that long after like everyday math had been adopted you know this was like new the new math and people were sort of parents were grumbling I just I do want to just and maybe that grumbling has gone away because it's been a while but it really is it's teaching our kids flexibility it's I think it's teaching them confidence it's teaching them some creativity and I just can't say enough about what I what I see in the classroom when I see them doing it which is just as you said so completely different from you know a generation ago or at least I guess we're maybe a generation and a half ago but I think it just really it really requires the ability to articulate math thinking that too in a different way when when it was just one way it's possible to just do it because that's the way you're taught to do it and you you can't necessarily explain 
how you can do it. And so when there's all these different strategies that they're looking at and then they're leaning into what is working for them and how they, how did you choose to solve that? And then explain how you chose to solve that. It, it does help with those much larger problems yep. that they're going to experience later on. And so when we, Chris and I went over to um, Stony mm -hmm. and the conversation that we had there was we went to, um, we went to a class where they were um, examining political ads mm -hmm. and making their own political ads, which was like right at my, like I love that. If I had had an open schedule on Friday, I would have been like there with the popcorn and then so I was, I was like so disappointed because they're going to have, they were going to have the whole, they were going to do all the political ads on Friday <clears throat> and the students were making them their own after they had examined them and then they were also, um, there was another class that w that was creating their own civilization, and so and that just spoke to the board game geek in me because I was like, oh my god, this is amazing! I'm selling Chris. She's like, like donating board games. <laughs> I am. I'm, to the I'm, school I'm gonna be at the Stony Brook the other, in a couple days, but um, but we were, what we were talking about afterwards was like all of these are critical thinking skills, right? That there's multiple ways to examine different problems, like that's going into the math space, but in these other mm -hmm. areas, we are talking about how like there can be different answers to the same question. And when you consider uh, different perspectives, then you are able to come to a broader understanding. And so it was really awesome. Like I had a wonderful um, time seeing the Stony Brook students and seeing the teachers that we were also went into the language classes, which was just really, really awesome to see the enthusiasm that the language teachers um, bring to the, to the subject matter. And the students were eighth graders um, but seemed like really comfortable, like answering and, and participating. And so that was really, really fascinating as well. And, and we saw the German exchange students, which was nice because I was like, I was just there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so it was, it was a terrific experience. We had a, I had a great experience there yeah. on our, on our visit. Um, it's like 10, a week ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. A week just ago. about a week ago. That's great. And so we have several more coming up between now and when's our next meeting here? It must be like two weeks, seventh maybe. November. 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 So between now and then, we yeah. have four more school walkthroughs: Blanchard, Miller, Chris Foley, Robinson, and three of those. If another school committee mem member wanted to try to fit that in, we would. We we'd still have a room. You know, I haven't been awesome. to Miller, and I can't make it. I know. I, I, I know. I'm so. No, it's yeah. okay. I'm presenting at a conference because otherwise, I would. I would love we'll to get see you the there. building. We'll get yeah. You there. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've just and, never been. <clears throat> and so, just uh, it's been great. So, I mean, we'll talk more it's about that later. Yeah. But good. The, curriculum coordinators have been fantastic guides and uh we'll keep doing that mm -hmm. we went to the outside archaeology oh my gosh Archeo 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 i didn't put the right shoes the on for this but we still I yeah across the parking lot <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all three of, yeah they're like yeah we remember we that. Like, yeah. went up there we just, i was like oh i didn't realize this was a hike but, <laughs> but it was great it was wonderful Fun. other committee updates I actually just wanted to raise, uh, coming off the back of our visit actually up to the high school that day, and it's maybe more to kind of finance committee and Jenny and Kerry to maybe just have a think. Um, Chris and I, when we were in the high school, um, it was raised to us um, by one of the staff members that they're really struggling for um, substitutes in the high school at the moment. and. Um, one of the factors around it they felt and what was being relayed to the staff who were trying to to find substitutes was um the concern for the rate we're paying compared compared to some of the surrounding towns um and so i'm just i just wanted to raise it um and she had done her she'd done her homework she had a, a nice list for us to kind of say this is um these are the various, I think she things were on a few, so I'm just wondering if that's maybe something you guys can kind of follow up with, um, and because I think it's definitely worth having a, a conversation about that again. Uh, and I had, checking yeah, that I had passed yeah. that on to you. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. so we had, I think it's important, again, for everybody to remember that when we went to $100 and then settled on the 90, the 90 was based on the comps that we had looked at. So we had looked at a number of different, uh, different communities and realized that when we had gone up to 100 using the ARPA funds mm -hmm. last year out of need, that that was actually going above what we thought was um, was competitive. I mean, above what was competitive. That's right? But right, it, was, yeah. it was more than we needed so that when we then looked at and then proposed in this year's budget to go to the $90, that was in line <laughs> and still higher than 
some of the others. So we'll, we'll keep looking mm -hmm. at it because mm -hmm. it's possible that other communities made adjustments at mm -hmm. the same time that we're making adjustments. Um, another aspect of the conversation I think it's important for the committee to, to remember <coughs> is that um, a number of years ago we reduced Westford Academy's sub budget because we really wanted, we, we, we knew that the priority needs to be for the elementary schools mm -hmm. in terms of substitutes and so we increased the ability to do the DLTs at the Westford Academy, which is still not ideal, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we haven't necessarily um, looked to increase mm -hmm. that at the same time. But we did also um, send out a, uh, another um, call to mm -hmm. parents um, after we, we had pretty we, it was pretty successful getting people to respond to our call for TAs um, so we decided to do the same thing for substitutes reminding people that that could just be a daily thing there might be there might be people out there who just have one day a week that they might be able to do something like that and so you know committing to an, a full-time everyday um, position wouldn't be possible so um, so we put another call out for that so we'll be I'll, I'll let the committee know how that um, plays out as well. Okay, thank you. And so, consider it referred to finance subcommittee. Is that fair? <laughs> Great. It'll just it'll go on the you know. I, I guess I'll segue into my update, which okay, is right. the finance subcommittee met, <laughs> 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 and nice. I was elected chair again. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, and uh, we got a preview of tonight's Q1 report from Jenny, um, which was great. And we are also, if you remember, in the spring we had talked about reviewing. Um, program fees and so we st are starting with parking and transportation and that is ongoing and I would just um, I want to add that the town and school safety task force some of you or the committee is familiar with it but this has been in existence for a number of years um, a number of recommendations have come out of that to make our look at uh, school safety and town building safety and also mental health um, uh, awareness in the schools that committee has provided a number of recommendations which a lot of which have been implemented in the towns and the schools um, and one of the things uh, it looks like the work of that committee is winding down but one of the things that the committee did at the last meeting was um, to take a vote on a recommendation for additional school resource officers and so this comes out of research uh, you know you know best practices from various organizations looking at our, our schools and, and our you know facilities and where they're located and the number of students and all of that um, and so the committee did take a vote on that with the understanding that this is a recommendation of like we would think it would be you know optimal or, uh, to have this you know additional SROs and the committee did in fact vote that they would recommend oh. an additional SRO for Western Public Schools the thinking would be that um, right now the SRO that we have uh, spends the majority of the time at Westford Academy and so like for example the middle schools don't get that much time and attention from that school resource officer and, and I won't get into all of it I would recommend you can look back at the meetings um, going into sort of what that job looks like and what how it looks in Westford but that's the recommendation at this point um, what's the next step in that process there's, there's there's really no next step as far as that task force and and so to, you know we're, we're not going to deliberate on anything but do know that we receive that recommendation as a committee and as a administration and then it's up to us to figure out where that fits in with other budget priorities say or with the the mission and the vision of the district in general um, you know especially in the year of the strategic development improvement plan so I just I'm reporting out as. So, do we put it as an agenda item for a just, a, just a general discussion? Or it may, or, or, it, may, we, or it may just go to the budget. You know, it may go to the finance subcommittee to look at and just be another thing that. <laughs> we're, that we're busy. <laughs> that is in the mix that we have to. We don't necessarily the, have to put on the agenda. Right, right, right. And the task force recognizes that. So, I want to be clear about that. That the vote was taken with the full recognition that this is. The task force is, you know, like if if we could have, you know, if that task force could have what they, you know, they could, you know, have what they wanted or, or what they recommend, it would be that with the understanding that it has to fit in with the priorities of the town mm -hmm. and of the schools, the budget priorities of the town and the school, and that it may, you know, it, it you know, it'll just have to be looked at with everything else. Right. Um, 
and so at this point it really does become a budget issue for the for the schools and for us to <coughs> to consider going forward as we enter into the budget season but I want to make sure that people know that that happened um, and um, that that committee which has been in existence for a couple of years at least three or four probably four yeah. probably four years now yeah um, you know has done a lot of work and and seen a lot of uh, good discussions around this um, but th that'll probably be the last thing out of the task force the type of because I I know briefly you and I I think had a brief talk about this before and so it's my takeaway was that that role can be kind of the idea of that role can be filled by you know kind of a few different types of people or backgrounds or experience or, or experiences um, or expertise and so I'm just wondering that would that impact then kind of the level to which then as well if it is something we decide right, that right. goes into the budget so any discussion that we have about that would look at that mm -hmm. we have um, a, as part of the process there is a sort of uh, counting of how that time how the the current school resource officer fills their time right mm -hmm. like these are the things they do mm -hmm. and here are the services they're providing mm -hmm. and so yes we would have that to look at to be able to say okay what are the things that make sense f to be filled by a school resource officer are there things that fall under other categories yeah. of personnel and right okay. that's all that's all kind of in our court now mm -hmm. to look at that as we go okay. forward awesome. that's a good point that's all i have on that um, just oh. a different topic. Yeah, yeah. yeah moving on. Um, uh, um, Carrie briefly mentioned that uh, there is professional development on November 8th. That is because it is election day. And um, uh, the town clerk does welcome student volunteers mm -hmm. on election day. In the past, um, there have been students who have volunteered. Students who maybe have an interest. Um, who no pressure. The three of you sitting here, <laughs> the three in the room that we're going to stare at, <laughs> or who might be able to help spread the word to other students who yes. might be interested. Um, the town clerk it does welcome those volunteers. Um, I believe they have to be 16, 16 yeah. and up, um, and they can either you know apply directly through the town clerk's office, or I believe that the town clerk, um, the board of registrars, I think, also reached out to. Um, the social studies department and um, the deans and, and principal Antonelli so they also have that information if students are interested but especially since there's been this poll consolidation and now there is voting happening at Westford Academy and at Stony Brook um, there are a lot of people who are new to voting at Stony Brook and everybody at Westford Academy and you know if they weren't at the May election it might be new for a lot of town residents so having extra students on hand to help direct um, residents in terms of where to park and where to go and where to find the gymnasium or where to find the bathrooms things like that could be really really helpful especially since um, voting at Westford Academy is brand new so to a lot of people in town so that would be super helpful if students are interested not just you <laughs> not, not just you there are a lot of students yeah. out there so I had a few more updates sorry yeah no um, we had special town meeting Oh, yeah. It did. Oh, oh yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah. That can be a prompt then. Yeah. No, <laughs> I have my note. I have my, uh, okay. Okay. Um, just a recap, because a lot of people don't know that we had a brief pub <laughs> oh, public yes. meeting of the school committee right before special town meeting um, to uh, elect, appoint <laughs> Catherine to be our representative to the delegate, to the Massachusetts Association of School Committees delegate convention in November where Fun. Uh, a number of Congratulations. get voted on resolutions and such get Very voted lucky on. Very me. <laughs> and so uh, we talked about this. You know, you asked, I think it was you that asked the question, like different things will be voted on, right? Resolutions and such at mm -hmm. the delegate convention. I haven't looked at the, the, the slate yeah. of what's, what's on the. <laughs> I am in the middle of okay. doing all of that because okay. I'm also trying to pick out because I, I am definitely going down for the full conference there's so many things on offer in all the panel sessions and yeah. stuff it's like oh my god how do you pick <laughs> so um yes and I will report back on all but there might be somebody else who wants to join me next week <laughs> I'm probably going yes okay. yeah Sorry. oh yeah no no that's fine yeah just gotta juggle some mm -hmm. stuff so I think we said it a lot when we elected you but sort of implicit in that is that we are trusting Catherine to represent the interests of the committee and the district in those mm -hmm. In those votes versus us looking at individual items and being telling you how we want mm -hmm. to vote 
and so I hope, hope hopefully that's comfortable for the committee. I kind of just want to get a sense of we understand mm -hmm. that's what we're doing, and mm -hmm. we could always in different years do it differently. Um, yeah. But hopefully that that works. They meet, they're meeting Wednesday at three, yeah. so that's okay. On the so if you have if you have any input, if you want to look at those items, mm -hmm. and give I can yeah. Why don't I send those an email yeah. then and and to kind of list everything and anything and. Thank you for doing it. Everything. Thank Seriously. you so much. Both well, of you. I'm a bit of a nerd. I'm enjoying <laughs> going down and, and talking all things schools and education. So oh, that's Kate. great. Yeah, but in November, I it's mean, but saying that, no kids, no husband. It's still like, the This cape. feels like a holiday for me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we offer them and some money. Kids. <laughs> At special town meeting. <laughs> One time use oh. funds. So I just wanted to um, share that because obviously not everybody who watches us was attending special town meeting. Um, my other update was that um, the committee will be changing the way we um, review executive minutes and so I just want to let the public know that we will no longer be approving executive session minutes in our public um, agenda and our public session. Um, legal counsel has um, advised that across, across the board, not just something for Westford or anything, mm -hmm. um, but that anything from executive session would be discussed in executive session just in to avoid any potential inadvertent um, you know public record issue so those will be reviewed and we also have a COVID backlog that we will be trying to work through over the next couple of months those are the end of my updates now thank you awesome. can I follow up on the money that's the from meeting the 76 76,500 do we have an update on where we're looking at spending that or where we're allocating that um. so it's I mean we're still planning we we're waiting to see if it was approved yeah but, but our intent was for it to go towards the decodable texts mm -hmm. which supports even that literacy grant that I'd mentioned earlier because that literacy grant goes to Nabnasset and Abbott yeah but this will allow us to provide equitable resources to all of the schools mm -hmm. um, we're looking to um, use some of the funds um, to invest in a more universal curriculum for our English learners mm -hmm. um, as that has increased we have um, I think it was 151 English learning students now with over 30 was it 31 or 37 languages I know it's over 30 but I can't remember if it was, I think it's mm -hmm. 31 different languages represented in the district now um, and then if there's money from that that's still available then we're planning to allocate it to the um, to our project to try to put make sure that there are projectors and or television monitors in the gymnasiums um, mm -hmm. at the elementary schools so that they don't need to wheel out carts with cords everywhere when they want to do either a, a, a team meet I mean a, it could be a morning meeting could be a whole school meeting or it could be even just class activities mm -hmm and the phys ed teachers needed to kind of hmm. is this something we need to vote on then that we would nope can i ask why just out of curiosity considering you know when we when we vote early on in the year on the budget we vote knowing that we make decisions certain decisions and they're not necessarily <clears throat> all reflected in right. in these new suggestions and so i'm just curious as to i mean i think it's more practice and precedent that mm -hmm. and I think it's an open I actually think it's an open question of mm -hmm. like where where do we draw that line right mm -hmm. like I think in the past we haven't necessarily brought if there have been changes to funding have we brought particular things back in front of the committee and I can say I don't think we typically have mm -hmm. um, I understand mm -hmm. that that line of thinking though and we and we've talked about that as yeah. well you know sort of like what makes sense in, mm -hmm. in a situation like this I mean there are Certainly, we can think of examples where we understand that there are fluctuations of, you know, monies coming in, you know, throughout the year that mm -hmm. that require real time changes to our, you know, to our budget, and our to our spending mm -hmm. that don't come before us. But I also get that this feels like we're at the beginning of the year. This is sort of like, you know, a, a good chunk tacked on. Mm -hmm. um, how do we handle that? So, mm -hmm. I think, I mean, we can talk about. I, I don't think during in informational updates we can we can oh yeah it. no it's but I much. think it's yeah. sort of to me something that we've we've talked about um, and that we can look at like what makes sense going forward like if this is something mm -hmm. that we feel like we need to bring back mm -hmm. um, I just don't think we've decided and we haven't done that in the past so yeah. it's kind of a new 
idea. Yeah. So, I mean, I appreciate you asking that question. Yeah. No, I, th I think it would be worth having a look because, yeah. I mean, if you know, we have to mind the pennies. Yep, exactly. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. I, I do just want to say that, and part of that conversation is the school committee does vote on the budget that we're moving forward. But the school committee is also not voting on line by line by line by line item within the budget, right? Yes. You well, know, like you're understanding that you're because that's kind of I think to Chris's point is that there are there are adjustments that get made mm -hmm. that then whether and then we we report out mm -hmm. so that there's transparency as to where all that money's going, mm -hmm. but it doesn't all involve a pre-approval vote mm -hmm. in terms of exactly. If this if 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 this specific amount was used for this versus this other thing that's still falling within that purview of everything, I mean it can't be. It's it's still falling within, um, uh, you know, acceptable uh, uses of the funds. You know I mean? I understand that, but at the same time, we also do look at it on a line by line item because we do make decisions sometimes on a line by line item manner. So I, I, I can understand how there is flexibility, but yeah. when we're talking about potentially b buying a curriculum or you know, projectors versus you know, other issues, of, you know, we've been still talking about the nature of social emotional learning in our districts. You know, I still feel we have an anxiety issue that we haven't tackled within the district. And so it's more, are we really making sure that we're putting the money in the right places in the priority areas that we as a school committee feel that, yes, this money is going towards. So it's, it's, that's just my kind of two cents on, on the situation. Yeah. I think you're right in, yeah. in the sense that when we vote the budget, the motion itself is the is has the, a dollar amount. That's right. Yeah. But I think you're right in a sense that implicit in that is a line by line budget that has been mm. presented that does it's describe the other. yeah and so like I said I feel like we're still feeling out like okay what do we do in these situations where we haven't necessarily right. addressed this in the past mm -hmm. and so I think it's worth like I think it's good that we're talking about it and mm -hmm. and thinking about it and if individuals have thoughts on it and want to mm -hmm. talk to me I'm open to that yeah. um, as well I think it's worth just also mentioning that we're treating these as one-time use funds that's right yeah, yeah. yeah. that makes Thank sense yeah. and, and I also just want to say just in case anyone's listening, thinking that at this moment in time we're second guessing what we're doing, we've talked about this multiple times. Right. We did already talk about it, the same things. We, we Before we even brought it forward, we talked about it, and I shared that with the committee, and we had a conversation about it. While we didn't, we decided that it wasn't a vote. So I think your, your question, Catherine, as to whether this should be a vote or not mm -hmm. at any given time, I think is a good question. Mm -hmm. But those are the same three things that I mentioned when we first heard about the $76,500. Some of which we had made the recommendation for ARPA. Right. right. Yeah. For a lot of right. And, right. and didn't get approved. Yeah. So that was just the thought. Yeah. But I'm just, I'm just saying that for clarification in case someone's thinking, wait a second, right. did something strange just happen? No, and I remember you, can't, you, you mentioned it, but at the time I felt it was just more exploratory rather than it was that you were coming down to kind of these were the final I, decisions and I know you were obviously waiting on the um, town meeting, special town meeting. Um, well, so I, I mean, I also yeah. want to say that it's also not clear mm -hmm. as to because when I was first told that these monies might be available to mm -hmm. us yeah. and I was asked as to how we might use them, I was also told it's in our it's our decision as to how we use them. Yeah. The, to the town was not going, the town might have asked questions about it, but even when the town voted to give us $76,500, they didn't choose whether we were spending it on these specific things. You oh, know yeah. What I'm saying? yeah, yeah. And so I feel like yeah. it's still, that still is, is in part of that, it's in the spirit of that same conversation right now, right? Like that is an adjustment to our budget that we can then use as we see appropriate. Mm -hmm. If there's questions as to whether we should use it for something else, I think that's a conversation we can have. Yeah. Any other committee updates? That was a lot. <laughs> it did. Record, that did spin. That, did, that spun into a conversation rather than an update. Yeah. I apologize. Um, we don't have our student rep, um, so I've I have been given some updates from Megna. So here I'm going to attempt to, you know, do Megna's updates justice. But the spirit rally is this Friday, <laughs> and the entire school is going to come together for some friendly competition. 
You know, would any of you like to do that? No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not putting you on the spot. But yeah, if, let's, if, let's, if I don't let's, say let's something... Let's just move on to the next agenda. If, if I don't say something that you think has to be heard tonight about what's going on at Westford Academy, let me know. Um, the town is invited to come with their kids to a trunk or treat event that's being hosted during the football tailgate at Westford Academy. I assume that's this Friday as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. It's a free event where your kids can walk through the parking lot and go from trunk to trunk getting candy and looking at the decorated cars, Cute. which is really cool. And lastly, our German exchange students have gone back home and um, our French exchange students have arrived. So it's just nice. more, more visitors. And, and as we talked about, we got to see the German exchange students sort yeah. of teaching a little bit to our middle school German students. And it was just, it was so cool to see. Their language them skills were sharp. Yeah. Yeah. They really, they really had a lot of um, they were fluency. Really, they really knew German really well, those German students. Oh, you mean, you mean in their English skills? <laughs> yes, they were, they were, they were great. They were great with the kids. And, and I was impressed that the, our Stony Brook students were, were very, like, more comfortable than I would have been at that age in, you know, uh, interacting with them, mm -hmm. asking questions in German, really, um, they were talking about fairy tales when they talked about how Jack and the Beanstalk is a story that came from the 1400s. That's right. That's what they were teaching the... You really the, paid attention. That's really good. I did. You were talking to others, and <laughs> I was... I mean, were you? Or yeah. Were you? Oh, okay. <laughs> you can fight in the car park later. Yeah, that's it for students. He's the bigger nerd. That's it for, he's like, that's it for students. <laughs> I'm just yeah. trying to make sure we're on schedule. Oh, we're, we're actually behind right. schedule. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're on to business. Uh, curriculum highlight. We are fortunate enough tonight to have our curriculum coordinator for social studies, uh, six, to twelve, 6 to 12, right? Uh, Adam Ngano here to talk about some of our civics curriculum and projects. This is also another great moment just to remind our students that they don't have to stay for the entire meeting if they don't right. need to. Right, yeah. You're welcome to stay, but at, at any moment in time, if you feel like, okay, it's time to go, just go. And I just want to mention, this is Adam's sixth year here in the district as the 6 through 12 um, History six and Social years. Science. Six years. And I will say, I think his interview stuck out the most to me because of his enthusiasm and passion for the content as well as for teaching and I will tell you six years later he's still that dial is still all the way up and I think um, he is a, a powerful driver of student outcomes and positive change and there's been so much of that with the new social studies standards so there's nobody better to have at the helm um, which he was part Adam. of he worked on them he worked on them. He actually Standards worked on, yeah, with the DESE. That's right. Yeah. Correct. Uh, um, prior to arriving here, I was part of the, the MCAS Development Committee for the Department of Ed that didn't actually pan out. Uh, <laughs> but then I was on the uh, Frameworks Revision Committee that I started before my arrival, and it wrapped up, um, I guess, in year one here. Which did pan out, so we'll focus Which on that pan one. Out. That's right. That. Uh, I mean, it's got its it's got its flaws, and they're still working on on a lot of stuff. But the the civics piece is just so exciting. We've got probably the best civics team in the state. I I obviously I'm going to be a little biased about that, <laughs> but when I travel to these events and I hear what other school districts are doing in eighth grade, uh, how they're meeting the civics project requirement at the high school level. I, I think we've got it. I think we've got it, and and we've we've got it. I think on a level that everybody wants it, which is fantastic. Yeah. So just to give you a little background on what we're what we're actually looking at here, um, the Acts of 2018, Chapter 296 of the Acts of 2018, and that should be clickable if you wanted to look at the entire law. Um, certainly, it's not required. It's quite extensive. It's the Act to promote and enhance civic engagement. The two parts that we're the most interested in are the civics project portions of the law that say if you have an eighth grade, they must complete a civics project and they must do a second civics project at the high school level. Where it's located at the high school level, what it looks like at the high school level is a local control question. Eighth grade though, there is no question it's supposed to be in eighth grade. So 
Um, that being said, if you look at the law, and if you go ahead one more, you'll see that the, the state lays out what they consider to be the six essential components of a civics project. The students are supposed to examine self and civic identity, identify an issue that they feel strongly about, research it, investigate it, develop an action plan, take some level of action, and they're supposed to be reflecting and showcasing part. If you read through that entire civics project law, you're going to see it actually ends with the state vowing that they are going to have a civics project showcase. And they are going to have this event probably located in Marlboro, where civic students from around the state are going to come in to present their civics projects. That got a, ri a little derailed yeah. with COVID, yeah. as did everything else. Yeah. Um, wah, wah. But uh, I know they're, they're certainly trying to make good on it. But actually, that just reminds me of one other thing. Just, just talking about things getting derailed with COVID, um, this civics curriculum, once it was approved in 2018, um, communities had three years to implement. Yeah. And the eighth grade was going to be the biggest change. And the eighth grade team that we have here examined it, thought about it, and in 2018, they said, we want to design our own and go for it. They designed their own, which they continue to tweak and enhance, and they went live with civics in the 1920 school year. Mm -hmm. So by the time these other districts were trying to play catch up, we were tweaking a pre-existing curriculum that they'd done an amazing job designing. Uh, that little campaign piece the campaign I, ads that you saw last Wednesday. I did make it back on Friday to see the ads. Oh, jealousy. It was <laughs> unbelievable how much the kids captured the spirit of all the various methods of convincing and cajoling and getting those voters out in support of them. So, I mean, that, that was great to see. Can you give an example of what, sorry, just so people don't think these aren't for candidates. What, no. <laughs> what, what's an example of something that the camp, one of their campaign ads was advocating for? So there was one student, and this really sticks out with me, um, who they could run for any, any office they wanted to. And this particular student said they were running for governor of Missouri, which struck me as a little odd at first. I wondered why Missouri and everything else, but obviously they'd issue, they, they'd um, investigated the issues that were important to the state. And they talked about it, and they were really talking about a positive attitude and outlook. And then the closing line of their commercial was, and the first thing I'll do is change it from Missouri to Happy Zuri. <laughs> and I sat there and went, that's brilliant. How has somebody not done that at that point? So th that was just one of the many. But I mean, some of the, the pieces with the, the American flags waving behind them or their, their opponents being shown in black and white with this dark, depressing music or going around the building and talking to these other teachers saying, I endorse so-and-so for this. Uh, it, it, they just captured all of it. It was, it was great. I'm sure if you stopped back by, I'm sure they, the teachers would gladly show you oh my gosh, a, couple the, uh, a couple of the ads. Um, but that being said, both buildings, and now we're talking eighth grade right now, they went for it completely. And if you look at that next piece, this is from Stony Brook. Um, this is just their civics project checklist. And you can see all over this student choice and this, the, the piece where the students are investigating something they want to learn about and deciding how they want to engage with it and how they want to present it. Um, and this is not a little project. Yeah. This is going over pretty much the months of February, March, April, and to an extent into May. Uh, and in fact, they were in the middle of starting the civics project in February, March of 2020. Once again, see COVID comments from earlier. Um, if you go up a little bit more, you'll just see the, the end of it, the production piece, um, where they are getting, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here, where they're getting their, uh, their pieces together, their final positions, the team slideshow, every member has figured out what their role is, which is always great to see. I remember seeing these last year and the students really getting to identify where they're the most comfortable and they're the best. 
So you've got a kid that's acting as a web designer. Another kid is the one that's in front of the camera recording a message or making a phone call to a candidate. <laughs> You're having flashbacks behind you, by the way. <laughs> Stony Brook students, they're like, whoa. <laughs> love it. Love it. I should have brought another chair. And had yeah. Um, so, I mean, th that, that part is, is great. And obviously, if you think about those six steps we went through, we, we've, we've got it all. Uh, showcasing is something we're really interested in. We'd love to do a civics fair or a civics night or a civics day. Or yeah. We're still exploring that. Um, I also know if we did an event like that, I know not only would the public be interested, but certainly local politicians would love it, I'm sure. Um, and it obviously, it would be, it would be really great for the kids to be able to share the issues that drove them to want to make some of these, some of these changes. Uh, if you go a little bit more, you'll see the example. I want to give equal time to all these great eighth grade teams. Um, this is the start of the research project at Blanchard. When they, and once again, it's the exact same thing, just looks a little different, where they start exploring their possible topics, they do the research, they decide what it is they want to do, and they go forward all the way to producing the, the final part. There's a lot of skills in this that get taught that the, the kids never got before. How to make a phone call. How to cold call somebody and say, hi, I'm so-and-so. No, well, we're not having them do that just yet. Yeah, that's uh, an extension project. Yeah. There's a room at the high school that has a phone like that. Um, but the, the, these students are learning a lot of these, a lot of these soft skills that they, they don't really get anymore. Writing a letter, writing a thank you, sending that little email, thank you for your time for sharing that with me, or asking for more information or an audience with or an interview with. And it, it's gone very well. Now, not everybody wants to play ball, and that's fine. Um, but that also shows the students that, you know what, you've, you've got to have that grit in that resiliency to say, okay, well, who else can I ask? Mm -hmm. Who else can I approach? This person said they're not interested. What other group can I look at? Mm -hmm. What is important to note about this at the eighth grade level is this is the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So there, there is no, okay, well, we've got to find a way to put the civics project in. It's civics all the time, mm -hmm. um, meaning the skills like the campaign videos, that comes back. In fact, when I was sitting in back at the beginning of the meeting, I was in a civics classroom today, and they were doing something on gerrymandering. And the teacher told me there was a way to rig it where the smaller group would have control of all the election districts. I know I'm admitting this on camera, but I still can't figure it out. I'm, I'm getting downright obsessed with it at this point. Um, she said she'd give me the answer if I went back tomorrow, so I think I, I, I have to. But um, all these skills get come together and they end up with this expression. Now if you go up a little bit more and you can even you can even skip that next one because we, we were just talking about that. One thing that the the Department of Ed got right on that frame and once again, full disclosure, yes I was a member of this frameworks revision committee, but I loved this. They came up with what are known as the history and social science practices. Uh, if you talk to any of the social studies teachers in the district, they one, they know I'm a fan of these. Two, they're going to know them because they're realizing that this is what ties everything together. These history social science practices are K to 12, and the first one is just all civics. And think about all the stuff we just talked about at the middle school level. They do all those things. Core knowledge of the content standards related to civics, the intellectual skills to identify and investigate an issue, how to participate, and really what their values and virtues are as far as the way they feel about it. It continues as far as more practices. If you look a little bit further, you see they also have these other pieces. Number two being a huge one. Develop focus questions or problem statements and conduct inquiries. Several years ago, when we started transitioning to the new frameworks, we went the direction, and I remember the, the meetings with Dr. Cleary, we went the direction of inquiry. We wanted to have a high quality inquiry design module style that was in all of the classrooms for social studies. And we achieved that. We, we had PD for the teachers, we had 
Kathy Swan, who was the author of the book, came out and worked with our ambassadors. The ambassadors worked with additional teachers, and that is really functioning. Now, I'm not just telling you that to tell you how great your social studies teachers are. There's a, there's a purpose to that. The problem is, when you get to the high school level, you have a civics project requirement, but you also have a full complement of content standards. So I've been trying to figure out how we're going to juggle that, because I obviously knew better than to add on to the teachers. The content standards are already large enough that getting through them and touching everything and exposing the students to a lot of these topics is difficult. So I decided to blend what we, the work we've been doing on inquiry design with our content standards. If you go to the next one, this is one particular item within the updated Massachusetts curriculum frameworks. This would fall in United States History 1, Topic 7, Progressivism in World War I. The underlining is my own. Explain what progressivism means, analyze text or images of, by a progressive leader, gives examples. You see Jane Addams, Upton St. Clair, Lewis Hine. You see down below in the second one where it talks about research and analyze. You got child labor, you got Pure Food and Drug Act, you got the Meat Packing Act. I started thinking, what if I made an inquiry module that the teachers could use that would allow them to teach this content while satisfying the civics project requirement. So this is what came out of it. And obviously the full document, if anybody wants to sit down and read it before bedtime or something, I will gladly give it to you, but this is what we went for. We opened it up with this idea of teens that were making change somewhere. All these different kids that were engaged in civic activities across the United States. Then we got into, if you see the individual supporting questions, a piece about Jane Addams, a piece about child labor, and then a piece about food safety. So right now, you might look at that and say, you're teaching about progressivism. I thought you were here to teach about civics projects. Look at that last question. Identify an issue you would work to reform at the local, state, or national level. So what we did is we blended all this together. If you go to the next piece, and I understand it will be small, but the, you know, certainly the, well, the audience out there in TV land can see it. Um, but if you look at this, each column is one particular reform, with the last column being the student, allowing them to identify a focus issue, identify stakeholders, how would they reach out to them. So we went for it. A lot of the teachers have piloted it. A lot of teachers have tweaked it. They've changed it. We have another version of this that is related to reform movements of the 1820s for United States History I. Um, but it was working pretty well. This is the point in the story where I admit I was doing this on gut, on feel. Didn't ask anybody at the state if we were in compliance. I just felt like we were, and I was pretty confident in what we were doing. And also, from a student engagement side of it, the students were engaged, the students were learning the content, they were participating in civic activity. So, you can see the final piece, develop your plan to generate positive change. Um, how are you going to do it? Uh, we had the idea that maybe they could do public service announcements on WABC at WA, or maybe write a letter or ask for an audience with a government official of some sort. Well, all of this, it's supposed to be nonpartisan. Um, it's supposed to be student-driven, and the students would identify it. Well, a few weeks ago, that moment finally happened. We were back face-to-face -face for a Department of Ed History Social Science meeting. And as I was listening to people around the table talk about civics projects in their district, as each person spoke, I thought, no, nah, we do better than that. Okay, we do better than that. Well, then eventually, the history social science lead was near my table, and I said, could I show you something? And I showed it to him. And he looked at it, and he said, oh, would you send that to me? <laughs> okay, sure, sure. He sounded a little serious. A <laughs> couple minutes later, somebody else who I hadn't talked to comes over to me. Um, 
would you mind if um, <laughs> I shared that with my supervisor? <laughs> no, 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 go for it. And I'm already wondering, I'm thinking, this either means they're going to have notes for me mm -hmm. about not being in compliance mm -hmm. or something. And I'm already figuring, how am I, how am I going to tell Dr. Cleary and Dr. Chu <laughs> about this? Uh, this will be interesting. And then I opened my email two days later. And they said, Adam, we, we really like that. Would you give it to us so we could put on the clearinghouse for all the, teacher, all the civics teachers in the state to grab it? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> let, me, let me get right on that. I thought you were going to say something else. Um, <laughs> so in, in, once again, full disclosure, I haven't actually given it to them yet. Uh, because number one, I wanted to make sure we were OK with that because it was our intellectual property. We developed it. I think it's a great opportunity to get it out there. Maybe somebody else is going to be able to improve on it and feed it back to us, which would be great. But I was thrilled with the fact that we can confidently say that for the grade 10 civics projects, the students are doing something that is absolutely outstanding and next level that I don't think anybody else in the Commonwealth is getting. So I'm certainly very proud of what they what they've got going with that. Congratulations, congratulations that's to huge. your team. Thank you. Yeah, that's huge. It, and, it, and that's that's the thing about that team. I I don't want to mention people because I'm scared I'm going to forget somebody. But those civics teachers, I'd put them up against anything. You could drop you could drop me on a deserted island, <laughs> but if I had that civics team, we could rebuild wow. a civics curriculum in a few months. I bet. <laughs> Would that help you on a dessert? It might. It might. It might. It might. It might. Civilization. Yeah. Seems it's a pretty good group of people. Fine. <laughs> um, but certainly, if you have any questions or have anything you would like further clarified, I'm, I'm certainly available. Thank you. Thank you. That's really interesting. I think we've been hearing about it, just generally about the civics curriculum for a couple of years since it went into effect. So, getting to see it in person and getting to hear about this success story uh, of what you've done at WA is really great. Well, I'm sure you've also gotten some letters and notes and such. We have. I would yeah, expect more. That is true. We have. Yes, I would expect have. more. That's, and it's always, it's really cool when, when the students reach out to us. Well, they like it. Keep, keep responding. They love it. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? Yeah, Alex. I just had a thought as you were talking about the timeline, um, going through like February and March, if there's any other tie in to um, the annual town meeting that now would happen, our, our own Westford annual town meeting that happens around that time to mm -hmm. tie in the civics interest, mm -hmm. maybe not, obviously not progressivism from the <laughs> 1800s, but um, some sort of tie in there would be, I think, also helpful. Mm -hmm. um, we saw some students at. I was going to say, we yeah. saw Mr. Martell's mm -hmm. students. Right, at special town meeting, which Ooh. was awesome. Um, and so it's just great to be exposing our residents and the future taxpayers to their, our legislative body of town meeting. So. I, I think something we'd really like that I, I have seen um, in the small town of Clinton, Massachusetts. Um, we share a hometown. <laughs> the, uh, they did a student town meeting. Oh, cool. The town moderator runs the town meeting. The students come up with the warrant articles. I, I would love to see us do something like that. Mm -hmm. That's something, once again, we you know, we've kind of been building the plane while flying it as we've gone through this. But I think now that we've gotten to that level of comfort with the civics project, I think we can start to expand and look into things like that between the civics fair and something like that. That would be really great, I think. Let me, let, me pitch a, uh, let me pitch an idea of what we've seen in some other jurisdictions. Um, and it's, it's a little bit in line with some of the restorative justice stuff that folks talk about. But I know that some progressive school districts throughout the country have um, actually have um, discipline overseen at times by some of the students. And so they have students um, be judged by a jury of their peers for different infractions. And then it creates the restorative piece of that and also um, something that hits close to my heart, which is participation in the jury process, which sometimes folks are not um, excited about, but it's so critically important to our democracy. So mm -hmm. I'll just pitch that at you. There you go. <laughs> I like it. Um, so thanks, Adam. I, this is fantastic. But I, I just, I, I feel like as someone who was an observer of the school system before, like my kids kind of got into the thick of it and stuff, you know, like you see at least 
again, my anecdotal observation is that there's an emphasis put on the STEM studies, right? I mean, the, the yeah. sciences, the maths, the, it's just, it is so darn cool to see that there's an emphasis in our district being put on civic education and its importance yeah. and putting it up on the pedestal that, that it really needs to be um, in line with our sciences and our mathematics and the like. Um, so it's really cool to see a, uh, a win like that, you know, because yeah. I, I think in the past, again, anecdotally, in the past 10, 20 years, at least since when I've been out of school, it seems like there's been an emphasis placed on um, STEM stuff at the expense of civics. And it, it's cool to see that there's, that we as a district are evaluating, are valuing civics um, in this way. So. Mm. And the fruits of, of those initiatives are our students who are right. actively involved. You know, it, yeah. it's it's good timing that you 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 two or you, was you three are here, because I feel like, regardless of how your civics project experience was at Stony Brook or whatever, um, you guys obviously are engaged and civic minded, and that's what led you to want to represent uh, your school. And so we appreciate that. And I wish we could take credit for that at agenda setting. That we thought, let's put these yeah, students. Yeah, exactly. Perfect timing. <laughs> right I thought of it until I saw them right there together. I'm right. Like, oh yeah. This is just really inspiring. I just feel like, in light of all of the events that are happening and just the critical thinking skills that you all are helping students with, it just the time couldn't be better for it. And the fact that you are a leader in the state is, it's just, is really striking home with me. So I really appreciate all of the energy that you and your team are putting into this. Thank you. I have every intention of telling them that. So. <laughs> yeah, please do. Right. Especially tomorrow when I go get the answer to that question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cherry yeah. Mandry, man. It's yeah. really like, they have some it's good, like the math They have some problem. good diagrams like, that show it. I've seen it. it. It's, it's crazy, yeah. It's so brutal. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Adam. We will see you. you. OK. We have Jeff Goodwin here to talk about Preliminary capital planning discussion. And I will put up slides. You have to match the passion and enthusiasm. <laughs> I, I, always, I think you can. Yeah, yeah. I always have tough follow ups. Last time yeah. it was the gray ghosts. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I just follow that up. Can you make a point, too, that we've had Jeff? Is this the second meeting in a row that we've had you? Uh, we have you at our last meeting? Jeff's here all the time with us. Because yeah. he's been here. He's been with us remotely, too, as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's committed. I, I'm just, I'm, yep. I'm impressed because you've been in the office for. Uh, few months now right. since August, August, right? And I feel like you're at every meeting with us. We so appreciate thank you. it. How we, to be here. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, um, we're going to provide an update uh, for capital planning here. Um, coming into cap, my first capital season here. So I welcome any constructive feedback as I embark on this new process. So. Um, uh, before jumping into capital, I think it's important to mention that we have officially signed a contract with SMMA for our feasibility study. Um, and uh, we're hoping to have a kickoff meeting on Monday the 31st um, here at Central Office. I'm not sure if anyone would like to join, but um, the feasibility study is really going to uh, be our roadmap for the next 10 years as far as capital planning. I was talking to Dr. Chu and Dr. Cleary the other day about items that have been on the capital list for a while now. Uh, some of them have been deferred. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, looking forward to the feasibility study guiding how we choose to handle those capital items moving forward. So. And just for, for people who haven't, maybe haven't been keeping, you know, paying attention to some of our past meetings, for our students, um, the feasibility study is an effort to look at the the school facilities in the district, looking forward, how might we use them, look at you know, our enrollment, where students are located, what the educational needs are of our future students, current and future students, and then try to map out what's the best allocation of, of physical facility resources in the district. So you know, do the buildings we have right now suit our needs? What might we change? What's the future of those buildings look like? Are some of them getting old? Do we need to be concerned about that? That sort of thing. So that's happening this year. Um, another another interesting piece just to throw in there is um, 
what their the actual contract reflected. Uh, as far as as far as what that what they came when we we had two hundred fifty thousand dollars appropriated by the town yeah. to engage in the feasibility study and SMMA when they looked at everything that we were asking them to do, their their contract is for two thirty five. So it's fifteen thousand dollars. But it would have been easy for them to also just be like, oh, okay, well, this is what we'll give you for that amount. They said, well, no, this is what you're asking us to do. This is what it would cost. And I just think that's a nice way to start. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, well, without much further ado, we'll get right into it. Um, I, uh, um, it, it's, um, as I said, we're going to let the feasibility study guide us moving forward. I think that I've prepared a relatively small list of, of asks this year um, with that in mind. Um, so going in, I actually, I think I might have crossed up my slides, um, but uh, I, just to provide an update on the, um, the Blanchard roof repair, the MSBA Blanchard project that we have going on. Um, we're submitting our schematic design for Blanchard roof. Um, in on Thursday of this week uh, on December 21st MSBA will vote to approve the project and, and de decide which parts of the project will be reimbursable um, and then we'll bring our final broad, uh, budget to the March 23rd town meeting to vote at the annual town meeting and then construction is set to begin in June of 2024 so, and that kind of leads us to our first capital request. Um, when we submitted our uh, in intentions to the MSBA, it was strictly for a roof replacement as part of the accelerated repair program. Um, as part of the project, we are gonna have to remove many of the rooftop units um, that exist on the roof. Actually, Chris, if you'd like to go back yeah. one second there. Um, so the, the, the pictures that you're seeing there are of the uh, refrigeration units, the cooling towers, the ventilation ducts, uh, all of this equipment that currently exists on the Blanchard roof is going to have to be removed during the project. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to appropriate funds uh, to replace these units as part of the project. Um, they're all 30 years old. They're at the end of their functional life. Um, some of them have already had uh, several failures, um, a lot of cooling coils that have holes in them that have had to been uh, repaired over the recent years. Um, in the picture on the right, uh, those two units there service the refrigeration in the kitchen, which have, uh, you know, significant repairs happen on those on a yearly basis. Um, the reason I think this is a vital project that we should consider pursuing as part of this is that uh, the MSBA will reimburse or potentially could reimburse up to 48% of the cost of reinstalling the units once the roof is done. Um, and I think that that's significant savings that we should try and, and go after if we have the option to do so. I don't remember, was, did we talk, have we talked about those units in the past or not so much? Um, they, they, they currently are not on the capital list. I recently added them to it. So it hasn't been a topic of discussion, but we'll, Thank you for recognizing the, the yeah. timeliness of, of looking at those now. I think we'd be missing a golden opportunity to not to not see what it looks at. Um, I do not have any formal pricing for this project yet. Uh, Amoresco, who is presenting us with our IGA audit of, of energy conservation measures around town, um, they are taking a closer look at this and are going to be presenting us with some budget numbers that we could potentially use um, as a guideline moving forward as we get closer. So, um, you know, this is two summers away, but um, it's time to start planning now for this. All right. Okay. So this one may come as a bit of a surprise, unless any of you actually walk the track at Stony Brook. Um, but uh, the Stony Brook uh, track has been subject, and it had been brought to my attention a few months ago, um, that there's some significant heaving going on on the track. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of tough to see in the pictures that I've shown there, but you can kind of see on that picture of the track, there's a white line painted. And um, what's happening, in, especially in that corner of the track, is that there are large ruts starting to appear. And, and it's become a real safety hazard. Um, 
I don't think we've gotten to the point where we've stopped hosting school athletic events there, but I think we're getting to that point where it, it could be a significant enough of a safety hazard where that will be an occurrence. Um, also, the other picture in the center there, you can see that a lot of the rubberized material um, that makes up the track is starting to deteriorate as well, and uh, you're starting to see a lot of exposed asphalt. Um, the two pictures flanking those are the basketball courts and the tennis courts, uh, which have been a subject of a lot of conversation uh, between myself and the athletics program. Um, the basketball courts uh, have significant cracks running through them, um, getting to the point where it's, they're, they're big enough cracks that you can't fix them with just crack filler or anything like that, um, and potential for rolling ankles and stuff of that nature. The same condition exists on the tennis courts over there. Um, a lot of vegetative growth growing out of those cracks as well. So it, it's, it's the, the complex as a whole um, has some significant signs of uh, degradation. <coughs> so, um, I do have a design proposal estimate from Nessra Engineering, and this is the same company that recently did the, uh, the Robinson Tennis Court project for us um, for $150,000 for a design of a new athletic complex over there. Stony Brook. Sorry, can I check? That's to that's to design a new complex, not to not construction. That's for so to what, fix what, these. What's to the issue with the design? Well, so the current conditions exist because they're um, let's just say the substrate that exists beneath those courts and those that track was value engineered when it was put in. Um, so there wasn't a, 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 well, a good enough subgrade installed below the track, and that's why. Sorry, I understood like three of those <laughs> words. Sorry. I'm, I'm, my Sorry. profession is also guilty of this, so I just wanted to say to you, like. I, I apologize. Just, his words were Latin. But yeah. I, I sincerely apologize. No, um, so I just wanted to be so, sincere. Uh, has anybody driven by the Robinson Tennis Court project? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the Robinson Tennis Courts, we're, we're, we're dealing with a similar situation, significant cracking. Um, and the problem was is that they installed the asphalt right on top of organic material. They did not install a properly graded sub-base below the asphalt. So it's all about what you put under it that's going to keep it from, from having issues like you're seeing like a there. It, it, it's a, it's a sub, a sub base is you know. Insulation um, layer. Yeah, it, it's, it's gravel, it's compacted gravel, um, and uh, it's just good material underneath. It's a good foundation below that. So that's really where the engineering and the design comes in. Um, so you're basically saying if we, if we just repair it, this problem will return because there's a more substantial issue right. with the actual sub-base. To properly okay. repair it. Sorry, it really I missed that part yeah. if you yeah. said that earlier. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, to properly repair it, you need to get to get it all ripped up and, and put a, an ample sub base down. Okay. So. I have two questions. One is, we paid for the Robinson courts with community preservation funds, right? Well, we en I think originally, or and then partially. we ended up get, we ended up getting a state grant for some of it. Yeah. Okay. I know that was at that particular time it was controversial, but I'm just saying I, I don't know if it's something that's worth thinking. I don't know how you weigh the, you know kind of weigh those. Yeah. Um, those funding <clears throat> approaches. Well, so my understanding of it is that it goes through the capital process right. first, regardless. and then it can and get. And it's, funding. That's part it of the capital right. discussion, is because people will say, "Well, actually, this, this these yeah, funds could you. help to do this, but it still needs yeah. that it needs to be vetted through capital." Right. The other thing that occurs to me is looking at this, and I've been to Stony Brook and used those facilities some. I haven't used the track though. Um, is the question, which might be naive, but how many tracks does this community need? Right, like, and, and I'm not. That sounds like I'm being like critical. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, it's actually really, I'm curious, and I just wonder if, if it's What's also part of, of like, it? yeah, and if it's also does this fall under the S dip, not the S dip, <laughs> other thing, other big thing, the feasibility. The feasibility. So if, if looking at facilities like this falls under that. You know. So the tra the track at Stony Brook is where all of our middle school. Um, track cross-country competitions take place. Both Blanchard and Stony Brook use th those facilities. And the football field is used by multiple groups. Um, there's other, there's other um, organizations like the Greater Lowell Road Runners use that track as well. I, I like would the say. Young, the, young, the young, the kid version okay. of okay. Greater Lowell Road Runners. And just particularly, 
on the weekends, if you go by either Stony Brook or WA, those throughout the whole weekend are being used by town residents, right? That's been my experience. Yeah. So. I just wanted to ask the yeah. question. No, it's yeah. good. That's a good point, though. Yeah. I yeah. just, I, I think it is utilized. I think the question is, like, where does this fit in financially? Right. But I yeah. don't think there's any question that yeah. I have, I have run on the Stony Brook track and I have I noticed that and I was like whoa I was kind of so when you were talking about the issue I, I've definitely right not, not that it's not an issue it's just about whether or not it fits and what I think is is important is that Jeff is recognizing this to then put it on our list of capital right. projects to then discuss at capital mm -hmm. so we wanted to make sure what's happened sometimes in the past is that the district has gone to capital and then told the school committee what was brought up at capital, yeah, and we're yeah. doing that in reverse. I think it's now. We're I making think sure it's that we're having the conversation now, yeah. so that if there's something that you're like, no, we don't. If you, if there was something that you're like, no, we don't support that as an idea at all, we'd be like, oh, okay, good to know. We won't do that. Um, <laughs> but it, the the idea is that then the conversations will be will take place over well for quite a while with capital as well. And it's great that you're looking at the long term, um, the fundamental foundation of, of these of these facilities, and not just looking to patch it to. Yep. Okay. And it's interesting to look at because I will say when when he mentioned the track to me, I was shocked. When was I, the track done? It, well, I'm assuming when the building was yeah, built. But I'm like, 20 years ago. I there was I was not aware of an issue with the track while I was over there. I knew that there were issues with the with the basketball courts. That that has been. That, that's since something we've been talking about for a little while. But when he mentioned that to me, I was like, wait, what, what is wrong with the Stony Brook track? I didn't know that there were heaves. No. Yeah. yeah. Well, and one other thing that came up um, today when we were at day school of all places, right, was that with the feasibility study, we wouldn't want things on our list this year that may be addressed Correct. through the feasibility right. study yeah. later. So Correct. not that this is a complete picture of our district's capital needs right mm -hmm. there is quite a bit more right it's just that these are things that we think could be done um, irregardless of the feasibility study sort of but also if you're calling into question the school's ability to host meets yes, as well sure. I mean that yeah. by the time we're kind of really right. seeing the fruits of our labor from the feasibility study I just don't want yeah. people with you know classroom issues or something like yeah. that to think that we're yeah. being that, that those aren't being taken as seriously as a track or yeah. you know a sidewalk it's just that mm -hmm. we, we have a bigger plan in place for yeah. hopefully those issues speaking of sidewalk yeah right <laughs> okay so yeah. um so we're, we're we're still at stony brook here um it sounds uh like some of you were at stony brook recently and i'm sure you noticed the front patio yeah. um so which was fixed two years ago so this is that's that's the concern with that is that the back the back part was this was removed and they put asphalt in because this was happening every single year and then this front that those sections have been have been fixed multiple times and so that's kind of the concern is that these fixes are not solving the problem is it the same kind of issue as the track and stuff that we're missing that uh, I don't know. This, this is a different issue. Okay. Um, so every winter, we 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 will drive trucks right up on that patio and salt the patio, to, you know, for 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 de-icing mm -hmm. measures. Um, the salt that we use is the same salt that the highway uses to spread on the roads around town. Um, there are much friendlier products that you can use on concrete. Um, but currently that's what we use so that is a that is a very um violent thing to do to a concrete mm -hmm. patio putting this heavy grade rock salt down on it each winter um and, and the and, and what it does is it just it causes the surface of the patio to freeze and crack and pop and then it degrades the way you see there in the pictures um as dr chu alluded to it's been repaired it's had little band-aid fixes done to it several times over the years but as you can see um, we're, we're, we're beyond the band-aid fix for this at this point. Um, so my, my suggestion, there's a, there's a particular area outlined that I would call the patio before it turns into walkways is that we would replace that patio with asphalt, which would hold up much better to the salting that we do each year. Um, 
you know, whether or not we decided to go with a black asphalt or if we wanted to go, um, there are a lot of options nowadays is things that you can do with decorative asphalt where you can actually stamp it to look like block or you can even have it a certain color if you'd like. So there's a lot of options out there. I think we can explore those and get some pricing on, on what those options are. Um, but can I ask a question that may not be welcome at this time, but is there like a more eco-friendly version of this fix that I mean because it, it's it feels like it feels like paving it with asphalt is but maybe there isn't um, that's a great question I can I petroleum based mm -hmm. I can certainly look into that mm -hmm. but I um, I don't know of any eco-friendly options that would hold up to the rigors of winter de-icing methods at this point so. Um, so, I, in the process of going out to seek competitive pricing on this, uh, my estimate would be that it would be under $100,000 to do this, um, and if that is the case, then we wouldn't have to go through the competitive IFB process. We could just do it with, you know, three quotes, four quotes, um, but if it is over $100,000, we would have to put it out through an IFB, so. And you know, just going back to when I when I think about the track and I think about the patio and I think about our district as a whole, I know we hosted uh, West Fest out at Stony Brook a couple weeks ago, and you know, I, one thing you know, being a facilities person, um, when I found out that we were hosting such an event there, I sort of cringed because I do feel a matter of personal pride in facilities, and I think that when people come to see a track meet at our schools and, and you know they come to a festival like that and I, I am a big fan of curb appeal and I think it's a good reflection on the care we, we put into our buildings. So I think those two items there kind of, you know, it's that the impression that people get of Westford Public Schools when they come to our facilities. So that's my little soapbox moment. <laughs> So this one, uh, the wide area mower, um, I, I put this one in here. Uh, we currently, on the left side there in the picture, you can see that is what we currently use um, in conjunction with another mower, a smaller mower that we purchased last spring. Um, that is our wide area mower, which we cut all of our big ball fields with and, and our larger grass areas. Um, that machine was purchased 11 years ago to the tune of $90,000. Um, and it converts each year from a lawnmower over to a snowblower. And it has become a significant yearly expense for us, uh, just converting it back and forth from a lawnmower to a snowblower um, it, to, the, to the tune of about an average of about $5,000 a year. Last year was closer to six, but I've, I've gone the last five years and looked back at it, and we're spending a significant amount of money on this machine each year, just converting it back and forth. Um, it's got 5,000 run hours on it. It's at the end of its life, and my goal would be, um, if, we, if we can get this through capital, to switch it over to a snowblower this winter and then leave it a snowblower until its dying days are upon it. So. Um, the machine on the right that I've spec'd out to replace it with is significantly less expensive than most wide area mowers of that, that class. Um, I've priced out John Deere's, I've priced out Ferris, I've priced out all the big names and, and this is, uh, for the money, it's a great value and a great machine. Um, that would be, um, over the years we've, we've had a habit of blowing snow with lawn mowing equipment and we have these snow blowers that mount to the front of lawn mowers and, and it, it puts a significant strain on the equipment in general so moving forward my goal is to start mowing grass with lawn mowers and blowing snow with snow blowers and not intermingling the two so um, it's like when I moved to Westford and got a got a riding lawn mower and then winter hit I'm like oh I gotta deal with the snow it's too much to shovel big driveway and I saw you get like a little <laughs> snow blade from my lawnmower, and I learned that anything over like two inches, that's, that, that <laughs> six inch snow blade just was completely, you know, we had like an 11 inch snowstorm. And I just go, and I went like two feet, and I went like a foot, and just, and I'm like, oh, I guess that's not good. It so, seems like a good idea, but you know, when the rubber meets right, like the road. You wanna, you wanna, 
But you know, cost, it ends up costing you more in the yeah. long run. Yes. I said the other, when you were explaining to me the process of converting it, yeah. we, have to, we have to send it to Connecticut. Oh Someone drives to the company okay. drives up here with a big truck, picks it up, takes it to Connecticut, okay. converts it, then brings it back up here. I mean, that in itself is yeah. so you you get, know, problematic. This is, a, this is a green. This is a greener yeah. option yeah. for us. I saw the Transformers movie and it looked a lot easier in that. Right? <laughs> in the I've future, though, we would ultimately need a snowblower once that one becomes on its dying. Right. Not necessarily. Oh, okay. um, so. This machine, when it's rigged up as a snowblower, lives at the Blanchard Middle School. And the reason it was purchased, and I, I, I can't speak to the, all the reasons why it was purchased, but primarily its job is to plow or to snowblow that walkway that exists between Blanchard Middle School and the church on the corner. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the name of the street there. But um, by the time we get to the end of that corner, we're almost a quarter of a mile away from the school. It's it's so my question kind of from day one was how come the highway department can't plow that sidewalk with a, a wing plow which after speaking with steve cronin he's more than happy to help us with that so um when that machine dies my plan is to you know speak with the dpw about helping us with that sidewalk and there sounds like they're happy to do so so i don't that's been its only purpose pretty much well i mean obviously john uses it for other things there but nice those those other things could be easily done with a walk behind snowblower okay. you know so that predates all of us <laughs> yeah. the use of that the, the, that was one of those old arrangements in town that you know <laughs> can't speak to um so the final one uh would be an electric vehicle for the facilities department um when i reorganized the apartment a few months ago and uh, moved Bill Bennett into the custodial supervisor position, I realized that I needed to give him some form of transportation to get around town. Um, and at that point, I gave him the keys to the um, retired police cruiser that I had been driving around town. Um, and that, that cruiser is a 2014. Um, it has 110,000 miles on it. So I wouldn't say it's at the end of its life, but it's, um, you know, it, it's getting up there in age. Uh, the, the domino effect of that is now that I am now driving my personal vehicle around town. Um, and uh, I think the goal moving forward for most town departments is to have people driving a town-owned vehicle while they're doing town business. So, and my thought would be, I, I try to get around quite a bit, but Bill Bennett makes his way around town much more than I do. So my thought would be that he would be driving the electric vehicle, seeing as though he's putting more mileage on it than I would. So, and then I would, I would go back into the police cruiser and, and drive that when I need to be out and about. Mm -hmm. So we have a quote for a Chevy Bolt EUV 2023. Uh, the quote for the vehicle is thirty-six thousand thirty-eight dollars. Um, that would be that's a quote reflecting today's prices. So I added about a ten percent contingency on that if we're going to be potentially ordering this in March if it's approved. Um, and uh, the good thing is there's some federal grants that could entitle us to about seventy-five hundred dollars worth of you know grant refunds on this or rebates. So. And we have chargers too for three locations. Yeah. Yeah. We have charging stations. Um, I, I don't want to keep you too much longer, but I figured I'd provide you with a quick update on some of the current projects that were approved last year. Um, uh, over at the Miller School, uh, at town meeting in June, they approved the um, replacement of the Miller walk-in freezer and refrigerator. Um, the price has changed a little bit from our original quote of $72,000. Given the, the current climate of things, the new updated quote is $89,640. Luckily, our appropriation at town meeting was for $90,000, so we just squeaked by on that one. Um, and the cooler has been ordered and will be installed the summer of 2023. Um, the incline platform lift at the Abbott School, as you can see, if you can see in those little tiny pictures on the left side, has been officially installed um, this past uh, summer, or early, actually late spring. So that project really went well. 
this is one of those projects that makes you feel good about getting into facilities. When I saw the young man who's in, in his wheelchair get on that lift and go up and actually be able to join his classmates on the stage in the music room for the first time, that's, that's, that's when you feel really good about being a facilities director in schools right there. So that was a great project. So that was completed on time and on budget. Um, all right, on the subject of our other vehicles, our mail courier vehicle. Um, our original appropriation for that was 56000 That was approved at ATM in June. Um, with, with the fluctuations in the pricing, uh, the new price that we purchased it at was 57539 uh, We did receive some funding from um, uh, Jim Arciero for the purchase of that electric vehicle. Uh, and then the, the difference of that, which is 1539 will be paid from ARPA funds, supplemental ARPA funds. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. That, that'll, be out of, that'll be out of the original appropriation that we took out for that one. Um, the vehicle was ordered on August 24th. I do not have a confirmation <coughs> on when the build date is, but I am very much looking forward to taking possession of that. I'm hoping it's in the early spring. So. <coughs> um, and finally, our replacement truck, plow truck for the facilities department. Same thing, um, the price of the truck went up due to some availability issues. Original appropriation was for 49000 um, We ended up having to move into a slightly different truck than what we originally thought because of availability issues. Final price, 57457 um, We went from a 2500 to a 3500 and I'm being told that the build date on that will be January 2023. So hopefully we get our new plow truck before the the worst of winter shows up. And uh, the 8,457 difference, that will be paid with supplemental ARPA funding that was approved at the select board on August 23rd. So that's a quick update for the current projects that we have going. And uh, great. thank you. Thank you for all of that. Um, thanks for staying late with us. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, and we'll hear back, I guess, after the, the capital process. Yes. Scheduled for November 4th. November 4th. 4th. Yep. The, November 4th. The capital meeting where these are looked at. Yeah. yeah. Well, the initial and then, yeah. you know, it takes until say, December yeah. to get, like, a final yeah. kind of vote. Um, I just had one quick follow-up question, which was the, so the Blanchard Roof, the Stony Brook Athletic Complex, the Stony Brook Patio, the mower, and the electric vehicle. So five, um, proposals mm -hmm. and you have them all as priority one I apologize for that I, oh, okay. I, I guess I guess um, well the MSBA roof I guess would be a priority two, where it's a couple summers down the road but okay. I do I do think that we need to start looking at the design of what that is sooner rather than later so that's why I labeled it a priority one um, the Stony Brook projects, those are safety concerns, so I would definitely prioritize those. Um, I, I certainly think that if the electric vehicle wasn't a popular idea, we could, we could wait on that and defer okay. that if we needed to. And okay. if, we, if we want to do that with the mower as well, we could, but it's just. Okay, just a follow-up question, because I, sometimes I see that from other departments, right? Everything's like a, you know, is everything really priority one? So right. It'll get it. Yeah. I think it's a great, great thing to think of how Thank you. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, and our uh, next agenda item is the <coughs> first quarter financial report with our finance director, Jenny Lynn. It's been a night of PowerPoints. It is, yeah. Right? Back to back to back. That's yeah, good. Though. I don't know. We see More that. More information. Right. <laughs> Visually it's presented. Been we just haven't had. We haven't had any. No. We, a yeah. Well. Yeah. So it's been nice. That's, I appreciate everybody making them for us. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I'll pull up your PowerPoint. Okay. There it is. I've been sitting in the back for a couple of weeks. I'm so glad to have this opportunity <laughs> to present something. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So today I'm gonna. Provide you the quarry. Uh, is everything disappeared? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, it's coming back. 
So today I'm going to present you something uh, about <coughs> our quarterly financial status <coughs> update for the first quarter of fiscal year 23. So the first slide gives you a summary for our fiscal year 23 quarter one financial status by individual state function co. So if you see here, you can see fiscal year 23's total budget is $63 million. So the total expenditure and uh, total amount of the encumbrance is $58 million. The remaining balance is $5 million. The percentage of usage is 92%. If you see in the lower bottom of this chart, the 9,000 uh, uh, state function code, which includes tuition we pay for private school and the collectives, remains overdrawn for 772,000. We are planning to use Grant 240 to pay for this deficit. Uh, Grant 240's application was just approved last Friday, so a transfer from general fund to a uh, state grant account will be initiated in October. I believe fiscal year 23 was the first year we started to encumber the salary expenditure. So fiscal year 22's data is most comparable to fiscal year 23. Next slide, you can see in a summary for fiscal year 22's quarter one data. On the right bottom, you will see the total percentage used is 95.6%. The difference between these two years is 3.6% for the amount of $2.2 million. When I saw this number, I was thinking, did we really save $2 million in first quarter of fiscal year 23? <laughs> The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking. Good pan delivery. Over. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we did not. the major contributing factors for the difference of $2.2 million is our function code 3000, transportation cost, and also function code 5000, which is benefit, insurance, and leases. For the 3,000 function call, in first quarter of fiscal year 22, we already received the bill from DBUS. So we encumber 87% of our total expenditure. That's why you see the remaining is much lower. But in fiscal year 23, we didn't receive any bill from DBUS. So I called them that last week to ask them to send us the first quarter bill. Or so we could have said we saved that much money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the other way to say it. Until For next quarter. Of course, we course. Right. Okay. So once we receive the full invoice for uh, the quarter one, we're going to create a blanket PO in the system, encumber the whole transportation cost for fiscal year 23. So that's one major contributing for the difference. Another one is our 5,000 uh, state function call, mm -hmm. which is benefit, insurance, and leases. That's also due to the encumbrance, because in fiscal year 23's quarter one, we encumber 79,000 uh, for the copy of leases. We didn't do that in fiscal year 22. So. Um, if we take consideration of the transportation costs and uh, the copy of lease encumbrance, our fiscal year 23's quarter one actual expenditure remains consistent as fiscal year 22's number, but at the same time, our budget remains very tight because you can see the ending balance is only $5 million, which requires us closely monitor the spending throughout the remaining of the fiscal year. Next slide is our federal and state grants. Uh, in preparation of end of year report for fiscal year 22, it was found that 89,000 long lost school choice money was received in February uh, 22. I thought that's it, never make any mistakes, <laughs> but actually they do. Uh, I'm glad we get the money back. In addition to that, we received 42,000 mask grant. Uh, that's it, um, advise us uh, we need to sit back and wait to see if we can spend that funding in fiscal year 23 because that grant funding has very strict requirement because we can only purchase that for the mask. Mm -hmm. It doesn't allow us to purchase any kind of dis 
disinfection products or face shield. So that's why Corny has a suggestion. We can purchase those transparent masks for special education kids so the kids can see teachers smile. So I just hope we don't need to send a whole bunch of money back to Desi. Mm -hmm. So other than that, ne next slide, we're gonna talk about our revolving funds. As you know, p as part of the implementation of free four-day kindergarten, we increased the school choice offset to our general funds operating budget from 312000 to 560000 That's something we have to keep in mind for fiscal year 24's budget planning purpose. Um, other than that, school uh, student activity account revenue stream remains consistent compared to fiscal year 22. And the last slide is our other special revenue funds. As I mentioned, this, uh, the school choice fund offset, which is embedded in fiscal year 23's budget, uh, that will be executed in October and reflected in quarter two's financial report. Uh, we will do a final analysis to do the transfer from general fund to school choice offset. Uh, that's pretty much about quarter one's financial update. So I'm glad to answer any questions. If you have any <laughs> questions. I'm gonna go back <coughs> to our first slide, this slide. Yes. Um, so the tuitions, we have a 772,000 overage right now. And you mentioned the grant 240, mm. will that cover that full amount? Yes, yes, and it will. Did we, how did, uh, was this, did we have similar grant coverage last year for the overage? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Either from Grant 240 or from Circuit Breaker, usually they cover the special education tuition fee. Can I ask just a more under, better understanding of the Grant 240? What exactly is it? Or? Uh, it, it's a grant to assist with special education yeah. costs. Um, so we had some staffing in there for many years but but pulled that out and replaced it with other costs such as this because with staffing you have to pay for retirement as well so it's not just the salaries then you have to add on the retirement piece so the less staffing you can have in grants the better um, but I'm sure there's a list that I don't have Courtney does uh, this grant of what are the parameters that was 240 that was a couple of a couple of years ago that we made that shift, correct? Yes, yeah. two years ago. Yeah. But it's something we typically kind of do get right. access oh, yeah. to every yes. year. Yes. To yes. Just like circuit grant. breeder, just yeah. like circuit yeah. breeder, okay. we get a certain amount. It, it, it adjusts as you know, okay. can fluctuate as to how much mm -hmm. we're getting. But it's something that we know we'll get. We just don't know exactly how much we'll get. So we mm -hmm. we, we plan to then do things like this with it, right? So we know we'll get it. That then we can reimburse something. Yeah, so we, we made the choice a couple of years ago that it, it didn't seem like best practices to be putting salaries mm -hmm. in oh, grants. Yeah. So now the salaries are funded within the budget and, and the grant is used to help offset the tuition costs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions or comments for Jenny? Thank you so much, Jenny. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Jenny. Thank awesome. you. Yeah. And uh, you. Yeah. also, alas, I would like to use this opportunity to thank uh, the wonderful job has been done by business office because last month we were short of one employee, our AP staff, Jenny uh, Walsh. She was on family medical leave, and uh, so she was still for a whole month. She was still trying to help out for her position. Oh. And Christ Christy stepped out. For, to fill in her position, and also Michelle did a, has has done a phenomenal job on rec reconciliation of our federal grant, state grant. Uh, also, Irene does a great job on the payroll. Because of their wonderful job, we can keep our business office moving forward. At the same time, I want to thank for uh, Dr. Chu and Dr. Clary, uh, the support they provided to me and uh, the mentorship I received from Ms. Jean helped me transition into my new role. Uh, that's really helpful and I really appreciate the support and the help. 
how how fast you have picked up on everything. It's it's actually incredible. It's, it's incredible. It's very impressive. It feels and like it's been very easy. It has been. Genuinely does. In general, it has. I'm not sure it's been easy for you every she, day. But no, she, no, has, but she has put in. Smooth. She has put in. That's the word. That's the word. Jenny yeah. has put in a tremendous That's amount amazing. of time of on her own time, trying to just figure out okay what is that transition from working on the town side to the school side because mm -hmm. she has wonderful experience with with all the public accounting and, and on the town side but then to but, figure out and just the idea that you we had the support with Jean Savoy yeah. mm -hmm. and you were adamant on like no no you wanted to do these end of year reports mm -hmm. yeah. so that you could do them and make sure that then you knew and I just think that's been great so you've done a great job I think utilizing the support that is available right and mm -hmm. and I think partnering with Jean and Jean is, can't speak highly enough of you either mm -hmm. so Thank you for all your work. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm afraid mm -hmm. to hear that you were able to do this, even though, like you said, you were there was one person down in your office. So mm -hmm. thank you to the rest of your team as well yes, for putting please. in the extra elbow grease and yeah. hours. Mm -hmm. Pass that on from us. Yeah. Our gratitude. So thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you. And I just wanted to echo also because not only does you know she does she does the Jenny has been great about obviously the report that we just saw and all the normal stuff, but we've also been talking in the finance subcommittee part of it, and she put together a few extra things for us to talk about fees in that space, and it's just been really great working with you. And like you said, it's been smooth from my point of view. <laughs> so just just a great job. I'm applauding. Thank you. Thank you. I, I had several questions written down here, and as you were doing your presentation, I was like, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. check. Oh, okay, okay check. got it. Oh, <laughs> so, like, your those. presentation just explained all my questions. Yeah. So, thank yeah. you for Great. making it all very accessible and understandable. Yeah. So, appreciate that. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks, Jenny. Next up, we have personnel update. It's in the packet. Uh, Carrie, anything to highlight there? Uh, well, no. Nothing to highlight except for the fact that you can imagine how busy our hiring managers have I been. I noticed. <laughs> um, but we are landing in a good position, and I'm thrilled that the new hires that we have are high quality. I mean, even though there were there wasn't a large pool for any of these positions, um, we didn't have to compromise skill and quality. So we welcome all of the new people on, to our team, and uh, we're in. We're really winding down on the hires which is great <laughs> awesome thank yeah. you so much Couple the next one maybe a one page <laughs> at some I point that, i mean that's a goal wouldn't that be nice that's a goal <laughs> a couple of those retirements jumped out at me i know and you know it's interesting i and i'm always hesitant to point any out because then others are not being pointed out yep. um and each person will have a different perspective based on their experience with people if I felt that I needed to highlight somebody, I have to say that Rose Lawler, who's the um, cafeteria ma manager over at Abbott, this way, feeds us every day. Uh, yeah. and she, she has amazing emails that you're just drawn to read about the weather and then what, what choices we have that are tied to that vibe. Oh, She's man. phenomenal. So she will, be, she will be missed dearly, but really everybody will be. Um, so we have some good people working in Western Public Schools. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. That's a motion to adjourn in a second. All in favor? Aye.